All right, guys, let's talk about World Supercross for just a second. First of all, I'm kind of curious to know how many of you guys actually watched this race uh, or watched it, you know, bought the package or anything like that. Um, I was going to buy the package. I'd like to support the series, but I have Fox Sports 1 on uh, the Red Button Channel TV anyway, so it's like might as well just watch it on there. So, you know, I, I watched it uh, the next day at 4 o'clock. It came on Fox Sports 1, and uh, it was interesting, guys. It was, you know, I feel like some of my takes from World Supercross were biased because the only thing I've ever, you know, been accustomed to is the way that Feld and AMA uh, do the Supercross series here in the States, and I don't feel like that's fair. We'll start off with the announcing. I definitely feel like uh, Ralph and Jeff, I, I, I was pumped for some nostalgia. I remember them being better than they were this weekend. They did not feel comfortable. Um, some things happened. Um, Ralph got people's names wrong a lot. They were kind of talking over each other a few times. Um, Chad Reed didn't feel comfortable. It just it seems like everything wasn't quite as polished as, as, as felt. I found it super interesting when the red flag came out and not one of these three guys even knew what the rule was for red flag, even knew how they were going to restart them, if they were going to restart them. I don't know. It was just weird. Um, and then the track, uh, you know, guys, it was a glorified arena cross track. It was like a U.S. Open arena cross track or something from back in the day. 40-second lap times. Uh, that's just too short for super cross. As far as the racing... Yes, there was some great racing. Um, that Brayton Wilson Sealy battle at the beginning was cool. Um, Roxon made the racing great because he didn't get starts and he had to actually pass guys on a tight short track, um, which was pretty interesting. I like the way they do the the triple motos and stuff. It's lots of starts, lots going on. It goes really fast, but I didn't know who was winning between the motos. They never put it up in the up on the screen, which was weird. And then the way they do it where they, they did the 250 class and then they, they gave McElrath the trophy and they kind of did like the, the final presentation ceremony while the 450s hadn't even raced yet. So they're sitting there playing the Star Spangled Banner and I'm like thinking, is this all over? What happened? And the 450s just hadn't raced yet. It was, it was just different. I'm undecided on that. And I want to say the next one can look so much more polished, but it's three months away. And I feel like three months away... They're going to be back at square one again, more than likely. Uh, I'll probably make a few more videos on this because I ran short on time. But leave me, tell me in the comments what you guys think.